Welcome, Norse fans, to Norse and Around, part of the Growing Truth Radio Network, brought to you by MyBookie.ag. That's right, MyBookie.ag. So, Alex, what have the <laughs> Norse been up to? All right, we'll start off with the men's team. They traveled all the way to UMBC, and it was a 76-75 to loss, very close game. And this one, as the Retrievers move on to 8-5 and five on the season, the Norse go to 7-4. and four. Uh, Drew McDonald had a double-double for the Norse with 24 points and 11 rebounds. Carson Williams added 21 points on 8 of 11 shooting. LeVon Holland chipped in 15 points. And UMBC's Jarius Lyles had a game high of 31 points. Uh, the big turning point in the game, uh, UMBC leading 76 to 75. LeVon Holland had a good look near the basket in the final seconds but could not get his shot to fall. A very close game. Uh, some game notes. NKU finished the game 27 of 56. That's 48.2% from the floor, while UMBC went 25 of 60. That's 41.7%. Uh, the Norse were 12 of 16, which is 75% from the free throw line. And UMBC converted about 16 of, four, of 19. That's 84.2% from the charity stripe. Each team had 34 rebounds and 28 points in the paint. And the Norse finished the game with 18 assists on 27 made field goals. The next game is a trip to College Station, Texas. That's right. They are facing number nine ranked Texas A&M Tuesday, December 19th. Tip off schedule for 8 p.m. Big game for the Norse. Well, uh, as I'll say, uh, that is going to be a big game. That is huge. The fact that when they're playing top teams like that, you know, it's going to earn them a lot of respect. Obviously, the, uh, some of the teams they've played so far this season have been uh, really great teams. Obviously, on uh, Sunday, you know, the uh, UMBC, another unfortunately close loss. But, you know, I mean, I'd rather lose, you know, a couple close games early in the season to learn from those mistakes, to learn how to finish the game the right way and right. Then that into the, uh, the tournament. And, well, first in the conference play, then into the tournament. Because yeah, between, uh, obviously, between three of the four losses, five points separate, you know, win from a loss. So that's not uh, not bad at all. And then, like you said, I mean, that game against Texas is just going to be huge. It's going to be on 1530 and uh, SEC Network and ESPN3. Yep. So all kinds of places where you can check that game out. I mean, they got a very talented team. Um, but then again, I mean, like they've played some really talented players this season this season from uh, Nick Mayo, you know, of course, at EKU, and then who was the fellow that scored 31 again? Uh, what was it? Uh, the guy for UMBC, I think that was yeah. uh, Jarius Lyles, I believe. That's his okay. name. So, yeah, so they're getting to play some uh, top competition throughout the season. Obviously, uh, Texas A&M, their depth is going to be a big factor. You know, they're going to be uh, they're going to be trying to wear Northern down. But then again, Northern's got, you know, decent depth. They just um, they just need a couple of the freshmen, a couple more of them to uh, start becoming well-rounded. Uh, mm-hmm. like the other day when I had a uh, coach, and we will play this, actually it was shoot earlier today, when I had coach on the show, Coach Tim Morris, uh, he talked about some of the freshmen and just how they've uh, been doing quite well. I mean, from Jared Tate, which who he's been thrilled with, with some of the other ones who have been working hard and uh, playing against you know, the, the starters and really doing an excellent job. And just couldn't say enough great things about, of course, Drew McDonald with his leadership and uh, Carson Williams with his work ethic. I mean, he works harder than anyone else. But we're going to hear that sound directly from Coach in a sec. Uh, like you said, we got some good games coming up. we got the Texas A&M, and then they're going to be back home on uh, Thursday, the 28th. So before the new year ends, you'll still get to see the Norse, actually twice, because you get to see them on the 20th, and you get to see them on Saturday, the 30th. Alex, are they going to have you at either of those games playing? Um, I believe the pet band is still off, but we will be back in action in January. And, uh, yes, the students will return to school about, I want to say, January 8th, I think, is when everybody will come back. Okay. Unfortunately, Sound Tech uh, 
technical difficulties. But what we're going to do is we're going to play the audio from Coach Moore's his interview today, and uh, then we'll comment based on it. One sec. James Ernest of Norse and Around, part of the Growing Truth Radio Network, here with the NKU coach, Tim Morris. Uh, Tim, tell us, uh, what was the goal starting out at the beginning of the season? Uh, the goal at the beginning of the season was to really start to attack the season. Um, and this back in my what have you learned about the team so far this season? I think we learned that we're, we're a young team. We're a team that loves to be uh, a team that likes to you see the practice. They can pull back because on the team going, they really go at each other. I think that's a, a sign of a team that has the chance for the uh, I think that's one of the fundamental necessary tools for uh, our marketing teams. Who do you feel has stepped up in taking that leadership role? Well, um, as you know, we, we lost um, Cole Murray last year, who was a senior for us. Um, we lost a couple guys, Ron Holland and um, Drew McDonald, and I'm sure I'll be there on campus this year. Um, that team. Um, I think they've done a good job. I think uh, Drew's really grown in that role. I think Mark's also grown in that role. Uh, leadership, uh, leadership, leadership, we're setting an example in a lot of ways. Um, we should be setting the standard. I don't think he, in a lot of ways, should be an example. So if you set the standard, you have a chance to uh, break it with you. We seem more of a, a vocal leader. Oh. Uh, I think both of them are still going in that area. Um, I think we're we're all at a, as, as a young as young men, it's it's hard for us to be very vocal. Um, but I don't know if that's all the expectations. I think it's good to challenge them. Um, and I think we see more of that as we see the progressive uh, going to the first seat. I think it, we're seeing more um, when the folks come in and see the care factor side. I think there's some. Uh, you know, everyone works hard on the team, but who's that person you have to literally kick out of the gym that they'll work? Of course. Of course. Two guys, 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 two been in it a while now, and I think he's one of the guys, one of the top three, three four guys that have been around. So, uh, with him, has he ever taken a bad shot? Cross it? Yes. Uh, I don't know if you call it a bad shot. I think there's sometimes you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't make the best of it. So, um, yeah, here and there, there's, there's one or two here and there. I'm just saying that because, I mean, his shoot, shooting percentage is so darn high. Well, it's a beat. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's the thing. It sounds like it's really good. Um, but he had uh, an amazing ability to shoot the point in the middle of the court. Um, creating angles. He's so athletic. He gets in the guy's body. And he can finish me. And he's creating him up the back. You know, he's just a special man. He's got to get a little bit of a ball. And uh, make a situation. Who on the team has uh, surprised you the most so far in the season? Oh, let's see. Let's see. I guess I'll say, uh, I'll say I have to feel a take back. Uh, he knew who he was, but his ability to guard the ball. It's at, his, at his height and length, uh, getting the car also position. Um, that's, that's pretty clear in a week. Uh, he has the ability to put a point guard, and you put him on a two guard, and you put him on a three, and then he did his motor and uh, endurance is, is, is so strong. Like he, is, he can go for a long time. He gives everything he has uh, every day. He, he's one of those guys. The coach is to the point where you want to know what you can get in today, particularly something that you can trade. Um, and he's kind of got to that point as a freshman. As a freshman, as a freshman, as a freshman. It's a good for the team. Do you feel 
weather is going to be a big factor when it comes to uh, conference play, having that consistency. For sure. For sure. I think you build, uh, you go to team through consistent after every day, right? And I think as you, as you find those guys and coach who uh, have a team, you can get six, seven guys. You know what they're going to get, just know what they're going to give you. And on top of that, they bring the souls. Um, I think that's where you can start building on the floor. Um, I agree with Coach. I mean, 100%. That's, you know, that's what they got to do is that consistency and that effort that they have, you know, keep that going because if they do, I mean, as we saw last year, Northern can achieve some great things. Alex, you're still there? Yep. Okay, cool. Just making sure. But, yeah, so they can uh, they can do some great things. Um, what were some of the things you uh, – took away from his comments? Um, I certainly believe that uh, Carson Williams really, really, just really works his butt off. Um, you know, even last year as a freshman, I have been completely amazed by his work ethic. You know, go, I've said it before, go back to the UK game last year where he, you know, and this was against two seven-foot-plus athletes who were going to the NBA. You know, they're the one-and-done guys. And he went around him like it was nothing. I, and boom, got into the basket every time. I was so amazed by how he did that. And a lot of it happened in front of me. I was sitting down there in the front row of the, with the pep band. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. He's just layup after layup. And I've seen him do it against EKU. I've seen him done it on and off this season. And um, he's really been an incredible ball player for the Norse. Yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised, you know, because uh, one of my buddies – he is uh, from down there in Owington, and he would always tell me, oh, this kid's great. It's going to be this, this, that, and the other thing. And I'm thinking to myself, this is probably some skinny little punk kid who can shoot the ball, you know, from three or something, but he's not, you know, he probably doesn't have a decent body to be able to, you know, play in the interior, you know, that kind of thing. You know, he probably just, you know, is playing against low-level competition. That's, you know, the plays in the middle of nowhere. That's why he's, you know, getting such high rating. No, not the case. Yeah. I was completely wrong. I mean, he has an NBA body. I mean, he's solid. So, I mean, he can play inside and outside because he can shoot. He's a great shooter. And like uh, they've been saying, like like crazy, that they've uh, been talking about it, about how his uh, shot selection, and he's not taking yeah. bad shots. He's taking all, he's doing all the right angles, and he's making the great shots. And in the cases when there isn't a shot, he gets it to the open receiver. So he's a well-rounded player. That's what we love to see. I mean, getting the rebounds, playing defense, there really isn't much that you can say bad about his game. That's great to see. And then on top of it, being such a hard worker is only going to get him better, which is a scary thought for the other teams. I mean, heck, he's only a sophomore. So, you know, the other teams on the horizon are – by the time he's a senior, I mean, already right now he's one of the better players in the league, but by the time he's a senior, who knows what they'll be talking, you know, for him. So, yeah, yeah, if he keep... Oh, sir. Oh, I was saying, if he keeps going the way he goes, by the time he's a senior, I think there's a chance that, you know, and I'm saying this in the most fair way I can, but teams might be scared of him. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That is that is true. Yeah, I mean, teams are definitely going to have to game plan around him specifically. And then by then we have a lot of other young, talented players that are going to be moving up and, you know, filling in the roles. So, yeah, it's going to be some great things ahead for the Norse men. Definitely. Um, I, I think they're only going to get better from here. Exactly. And uh, switching to a team that can only get better, the uh, the Norse women, uh, currently one in seven, it's been, you know, a rough year again, but they are extremely young. Uh, they got, young. just got done playing Indiana University. So, you know, if the, uh, the men were playing Indiana University, that arena would have been jam-packed. Uh, oh, geez, yeah. Yeah, that would have been ridiculous. I mean, Indiana fans would have traveled, and obviously the uh, UK faith or the MKU faithful would have been there. Because that was one of the things that the last game – that uh, went to the last home game against EKU is just the amount of attendance for a Sunday game. Everyone was so excited. The coaches, the players, 
really reveled in the fact that the uh, fan support was there. Yeah. So hopefully we can do the same thing or something similar uh, for the women's teams in the future. Because they're going to be playing against the University of, well, these aren't going to be home games, obviously. The University of North Florida, Jacksonville University, both of those are real close to each other. East Tennessee, and then they're going to come home. Actually, that's the really cool part. Is that, yeah, Thursday, December 28th, it's going to be a double header. That is awesome. So you get to watch both teams play the women's and the men's. They're playing the same teams, or are they playing different teams? Uh, let's see. Yeah, they're playing different teams. So the women's are playing against Milwaukee and the men are playing against IUPUI, the new team to the conference. So, yep. yeah, fans definitely get there early, stay for both. I, I think they still let you do that. I know at the old arena you were allowed to stay for both games, so hopefully they're still doing that. That would be great. Yeah, I think it would be a great deal for fans and students alike. Definitely. So let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, and then, cause like I uh, said, I got to talk to the uh, the men's coach, Tim Morris, I also got to talk to the uh, women's basketball coach, Ashley Early. Here's the sound. All right. James Hunt of uh, Norse and Around here with Ashley Early, assistant coach to the Northern women's team. So how do you feel um, that you're achieving, or what was the goal for the uh, this season? The goal coming in to this season, um, you're aware of, of our team, um, seven, seven freshmen, and then we've got uh, another newcomer. Um, you know, to go out every day and get there. You know, obviously, this, this is my first year, and okay? Coach Whitaker, and now my second year. Um, so we're, we are a work in progress. Um, so, you know, every day it's just a matter of keeping that laser focus and understanding that, that it is a problem. You know, and, and to keep encouraging and, and pushing and, and learning every day. I agree with you. I was going to say, it's not like uh, you got the program that Coach Winstow left. Unfortunately, you have, there's been time in between, and it's, there's a lot to, uh, a lot of change going on with going to Division One. And like you said, seven new players, that is uh, uh, definitely uh, a challenge to induct uh, them into the culture. Yeah, that, that's exciting. I know I can speak for myself coming in and doing a staff. You know, when she when she said, talked about her vision for the program, and then she um, shared with me the makeup of the team. You know, that's that's what's fun. That's why we do that. You know, so it's it, it's been a lot of fun. We've had a lot of growth so far. Do you feel the goal is pretty much the same for the second half of the season that it was for the first about uh, building? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think you look at our team, uh, if you've been able to finish from the beginning of the year until now, um, we have gotten better. You know, at this point, and if we close in on you know, December, uh, going into the conference, uh, and obviously, but our scores, and if you've had an opportunity to see us, it's, it's just finishing. At this point, finishing, you know, you'll stay and play out of the 40 minutes. You know, we're at a point where we're probably playing at hard 30 minutes, you know, minutes out of 40. And the teams that we're playing, they're staring from me as well. You know, so it's, yeah, at this point, it's continuing to get better, but at the same time, being able to close exactly. you know, those, those tight games. I yeah. that one of the toughest things in sports is being able to close up a game and being able to uh, – play the whole game. I know with uh, heck even the Bengals for years you know they would have three great quarters and then one quarter would always be an issue. So it does take some time but it sounds like it's going in the right direction. You know getting those young talented recruits that you've gotten on the team. Um, how do you feel your first year at NKU is going? I love it here. Um, I can say that without hesitation. Um, you know, again just being able to influence and, and teach uh, our players. I mean, they're such a joy. They work so hard, you know. And I say that genuinely. Um, they do. They want to work. Um, it's just a matter of right? they don't have to practice, only practice to, to get out there and, and make those mistakes and those games. You know, we're like games. So, I tell you what, 
it's been here about a month or so. A few more days. They're going to have so much experience with their film. And um, I know that for me, that's, I, I love it. Mm-hmm. Great administration that supports that we get here on fans. Um, it's, just, it's just a special so in other words, by the time they get up to, say, Little Caesars Arena, uh, they will have uh, a good amount of experience going for them, it sounds like. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I wouldn't want to play it at that point. <laughs> you got to love coaches' confidence there. You know, uh, the fact that, you know, they're going to build on what they've been doing, and they're just, you know, they just keep improving. So, yeah, I mean, there is a bright future there for the Norse. Most certainly. Um, you know, when you look at a team where 11 of 13, I believe, of their players are freshmen and sophomore, they can only get better. And this is a kind of season where you can really look into, okay, what can we improve upon? What have we learned? And what can we take into next season? Now, there's still, you know, half of a season ahead. There's definitely chances for games to win. Um, you know, that game against Indiana, they played very hard. And, I've seen sparks in that team. I've seen a lot of sparks to where I think they're going to be pretty good once these um, young players get developed. You know, and I can tell they really, really wanted to win that game, and they just got a little worn out, and it happens. But um, there's still a season ahead, and of course, as uh, the coach mentioned, you know, the uh, tournament at Little Caesar Arena. Um, you never know what's going to happen. We've seen it before with the men's tournament last year, so obviously, hey, anything's possible. Excellent. So, Alex, uh, with uh, you know being off for finals week, any uh, final thoughts or anything? Uh, oh, you had a big announcement to tell us about the uh, the baseball schedule. Yes, 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 yes. The baseball team announced their 2018 schedule. And give me one moment here. I have a little slow computer, but yes, uh, NKU announced their 2018 baseball schedule. So we'll go ahead and run through that as our final part of our show today. Um, all right, so I'll just go through um, some the key high games. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, how they're starting off in uh, Tennessee. You know, they're going to be yep. on the road, on the road, on the road. A lot of on First the road. game, um, March 7th at Kentucky. So that's a big one. Kentucky's pretty good. Um, then three games set on the March 9th, 10th, and 11th at Miami, Ohio, but the 11th game will be home. That will be our first home game of the year, March 11th against Miami, Ohio. Then they host Butler, uh, March 20th at Eastern Kentucky. Um, They host Rio Grande in a doubleheader on March 27th. That's a home game. Um, At Butler, April 3rd. April 10th at Louisville. Last season, they played at Louisville, at Louisville Slugger Field. It does not say Louisville Slugger Field, but uh, they will be playing at Louisville. Louisville is apparently a very good baseball team. Um, so yeah, April 18th against Miami Hamilton. Uh, April 24th, home against Xavier. May 1st, home against Eastern Kentucky. And have some conference games that day against Milwaukee and Youngstown. Those are home games. Uh, May 15th, at Xavier. Then they go to Dayton at Wright State. And then May 23rd through the 26th will be the Horizon League Baseball Championship. And that is the problem with baseball right there, is that it starts, but then you don't know it started unless you're in, like, certain areas of the country because they're not going to be home. I mean, they start uh, February 16th, which I will be at a Blues Travelers concert. Fortunately, the wife doesn't listen to the show, so I can uh, – Go ahead and say that because that's her Christmas present is Blues Travelers uh, tickets. But, um, yeah, they start on February 16th, and they don't make it home till March 11th, so almost a whole month on the road. Yeah, I think the, what happens is, too, is some of these teams, you know, they'll, they'll play down in the southern part of the U.S. They'll go down to, you know, they'll kick the season off uh, against some team in Florida or uh, Alabama Tennessee, because it's warmer, of course. It's pretty cold up here exactly. still. Yep, Tennessee, well, Louisiana, I know what you mean. So they're, yeah, they're trying to get warmer, which I don't blame them. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Just the only downside to it is, you know, you don't get started really into this home season till then. So then everyone forgets about the games 
you know, and then they're like, oh, I was going to go to the game. I was going to do this. I was going to do that. And then, unfortunately, it's a lot of was gonna. Um, but hopefully, you know, with the uh, the talent they have on the team, the types of teams are going to be playing at home, you know, like you mentioned, Xavier, that uh, hopefully – uh, fans will come out and enjoy the games on Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, a lot of the times, uh, mostly Friday, Saturday, Sunday as well, and then a lot of Tuesday games for the one-off games. So it sounds like there's going to be a good schedule going on there. Um, definitely. Any uh, thoughts with being out for the uh, winter break? Um, I hope everybody had a good finals. I hope everybody did well in their finals. I hope uh, congratulations to those who have graduated. Um, have a wonderful Christmas, be safe, and um, that's pretty much it. Have a Merry Christmas. Excellent. So for North and Around, part of the Grueling Truth Radio Network, um, we're not going to do a show next week because we're not doing a show on Christmas, obviously. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to thank you all for listening. Uh, wish you all uh, the best of holidays. And, of course, for mybookie.ag, feel free to bet as many of the bowl games as possible with uh, mybookie.ag. 